Well, Rascals, the time is now. I've been threatening to fix this guy up for weeks, and uh, now seems like a good time to do it. Are we going to do a fancy opener for this video, too? Yeah, no. Unfortunately, we spent the last of our green screen budget on the last video. Fooey. Anyway, cue the intro. Hey, the amazing Rando! Watch Rando the Great construct sets with his very mind! <laughs> Okay, so maybe we can't swing to something so high production like the last video that we did building a Game Boy Advance, but there is a little more involved in putting this one back together because, you know, we're doing more work to it. So, what are we going to be doing? Well, we've got this lovely little kit from Handheld Legends where we're going to be replacing the battery with a rechargeable lithium-ion battery. For some reason, that that phrase escaped me for a minute. I don't know why. Uh, we're also going to be replacing the screen with an IPS backlit screen. So, joy. All right, so let's get cracking, shall we? Well, our journey starts as most invasive surgeries do. We gotta open her up and get to the gooey bits inside. Well, it's a Game Boy, so it shouldn't be gooey, but you get what I mean. This is gonna be a full dismantle, top to bottom, so everything needs to come out and off. Out comes the PCB, the silicone pads, and buttons. <laughs> I have too much fun doing that. Removing the screen on a Game Boy Advance is the most nerve-wracking thing to me because you literally have to flex the shell in order to get the adhesive to let go. I even ended up using a screwdriver as a kind of a pry bar to help get it out. But ever so gently and gingerly because I don't want to break the screen. That thing's still good. It's still usable. I can I can do something with it. Don't believe me? Oh, <laughs> just you wait and see. And yes, even the screen protector needs to come off. Because all of this needs a thorough cleaning and then we can move on to modifying certain areas. <laughs> I probably didn't have to remove the battery tabs from the shell, but since they're not going to be used anymore, may as well. And while you have it completely apart, you may as well do a thorough cleaning here and there. You know, get rid of the residual adhesive gunk that's going to get in the way, the worn out label on the back. I just blotted a ton of isopropyl alcohol on there to loosen it up and then wipe it away with the same Q-tip that I blotted this stuff on. It's ethanol based, it'll evaporate. But now, we have a nice clean surface. And now it's time to cut stuff out. Lucky you, I elected to remove the audio from this part of the video. But me, I had to listen to the grating sound of the Dremel as I was going. It wasn't actually so bad, I listen to music while I do this, so... It was mostly muffled. But imagine having to hear this without music. I'm sorry, did I just hear you say that wasn't so bad? What the hell is wrong with you? Anyway, getting back to the point of all this, uh, it does have to be trimmed in a specific way so that the new screen will fit. You don't like it? Well, you're in luck, because Retro 6 offers pre-modified Game Boy shells, and they are available through Handheld Legend. By the way, I'm not sponsored at all. You know, one of the things you worry about when you order stuff online and it has to be shipped to you is how it's going to be packaged. And the fact that the screen kit came packaged in its own plastic case, it's a nice touch. There's a bit of plastic you can adhere to the back of the screen as an insulator, and that's exactly what it's meant to be. It even says so in the little text on it. 
Then of course you're gonna have the foam adhesive that'll hold the screen in place once you've got everything set up and lined up. The screen actually has its own PCB slash ribbon cable that attaches separately. Does that make sense? I mean, you attach it and then you put on the ribbon cable for... It. You know, if you want detailed information, go to Handheld Legend. They've, they've got the kits. They sell the kits. They know the stuff. I'm, I'm not even a... I don't know why I'm trying to do DIY. I'm not a DIY channel. Look, if you wanted a DIY video, this isn't it. I literally just put this video together because I think building things is fun and I like to show off my technical prowess. Now we're worried. Oh yeah, you may be wondering what those three random wires soldered to the ribbon cable are. Well, that's an optional thing, but with those wires, you can bridge the ribbon cable with the select button and the left and right shoulder buttons. Why? Well, Cornelius, I'm glad you asked. By holding down either the left or right shoulder buttons and then bumping the select button, you can either dim or brighten the screen. How fancy! And yes, the pads on the ribbon cable are marked to tell you which wire goes where. It's pretty simple, but on the board itself, you'll want to solder to specific pads. To access the select button, uh, you gotta go here, to that, uh, that one little pad marked TP2. Look, I didn't design the thing, I don't know what it stands for. Then obviously the other two wires go to the right shoulder pad and the left shoulder pad, respectively. And if you did your job right, you'll be able to adjust the brightness up and down based on which buttons you push in sequence. Look, it's not as difficult as it sounds. Just trust me. Then of course, with every video like this, there's the reassembly. Because it wouldn't be a mod video if you left it at the teardown. In fact, by that very logic, it would be a teardown video. Why am I getting so snippy about this? Now that it's all put back together, the next step is to put the battery kit together, which comes with its own PCB made by Clean Juice. Again, I'm not sponsored, I just like the stuff. And fair warning, 9 times out of 10, the battery mod is sold out, so you may have to shop around or just wait until they're restocked. Look at that! Bright, shiny screen. And now that this bad boy is packed with a rechargeable lithium-ion battery, you're gonna have to be able to access that charging port, aren't ya? Aren't ya? Well, Handheld Legend has you covered there too, because they sell pre-modified battery covers, and since the battery cover for this Game Boy had long been lost, it just made sense. That's right, my friends! No longer will this Game Boy be bound by AA batteries. No longer will you have to squint in the dark or hold up a flashlight to see the screen if the lights go out. No, this Game Boy Advance is perfect. Ish. Anyway, I think this thing turned out great. The uh, screen is nice, crisp, and bright. The dimming feature actually works. That was what I was afraid of the most is screwing that up. And I think the black accents give it a nice touch. Anyway, even though they're not sponsoring me, because I literally paid for everything that I used in this video out of pocket, I wanted to thank Handheld Legend for having all the stuff that I was able to use to put this thing together. And uh, I also want to thank my roommate for allowing me to use his Game Boy as a guinea pig. <laughs> Anyway, if you liked this video, let me know by giving that like button a bop, leave some comments down below, and I will see you in the next video. Hopefully, it'll amaze.